So thanks for joining the talk. Uh, my name is Drew Barbier. I'm Director of Product Marketing at Sci-5. I've been with Sci-Fi for, for almost five years now, which is a really long time, but uh, I do want to start off by saying uh, it's great to be back uh, at Moscone in person, presenting to actual people in the audience. So thank you very much. So continuous innovation and embedded risk five. Um, relentless innovation is a term we use quite a bit at Sci-Fi. And, and really for all of 2021, we've been very, very busy. So we've had two major releases this year. Um, and the way that Sci-5 does our releases is pretty unique, so it's worth talking about that for a second. Uh, so we don't just uh, release a product and put it on the shelf and never touch it again. Uh, basically, for uh, our entire portfolio, we continuously improve them, we introduce new features, we introduce new products, and these are all done through these, these releases that we call federated releases. So the naming scheme uh, are on the slide here, so 21G1. So the 21 stands for the year, uh, 2021. And G1 means it's the first general release of the year, uh, and 21G2 being the, the subsequent second release. So 20, 21 G1 happened in uh, February of this year and realized a number of improvements across the portfolio. Uh, so some of the things we worked on were improving code density, both in the embedded software libraries as well as some, some ISA extensions. Uh, we also introduced half precision floating point on some of the processors, as well as uh, improved some of the, the memory subsystems in the cores. Uh, fast forward, uh, about six months later in July, we released 21G2. And so 21G2 was our biggest release of the company, really. Uh, so we introduced three entirely new products. Uh, the P550, which is one of the highest performance licensable RISC-V cores on the market today. Uh, the P270, which is uh, an application processor that's efficient but has vector compute. And then the Sci-5 Intelligence X280, uh, which is really focused at the uh, AI type applications. And then somewhere in between there, we also introduced some new branding to sort of reflect the, the new products that we were releasing. Uh, so Sci-5 classical cores with the, the ES and U branding uh, became known as the, the Sci-5 Essential family. And then uh, we released the Sci-5 Performance and Sci-5 Intelligence families uh, to support the new product launches that happened in 21G2. But we're not finished with 2021. Uh, we have one more release this year, unsurprisingly called 21G3, and this is a major update across our entire portfolio. Uh, so in sci-fi performance cores, we support now up to eight cores, and we do that through supporting uh, two clusters. Uh, we also introduced the, the hypervisor extension, which has been newly ratified. So support for the instructions and the registers have been added to these processors as well as just general improvements uh, on the power and frequency. And I'll talk about all of these in, in subsequent slides. On the Sci-5 Intelligence family, uh, similar to performance, we increased the core count up to eight cores uh, through a multi-cluster implementation. We've also added new instructions, new computation instructions to support some of the, the um, algorithms in this space, as well as some area optimizations by supporting the, the embedded vector profile. And then finally, on the Essential portfolio, we introduced an entirely new uh, product line in the 6 Series. And so the goal of the 6 Series is to offer higher performance and more features in a similar power and area envelope as sort of the outgoing E3 and, and 5 Series cores, uh, as well as World Guard support. So I'll talk about all of these in the, the coming slides, but first uh, I want to start with the uh, 6 Series core. Um, so similar to all of the other Essential family products, uh, we have a single microarchitecture that spans multiple different product points. So it's an eight-stage, single-issue, in-order pipeline. And with that, we get the, the U6 series, which is a 64-bit application class processor, uh, the S6 series, which is a 64-bit embedded processor, and the E6, which is a 32-bit embedded processor. Now, across the different products, we have uh, configurable ISA support, so whether or not you have the embedded profile, or floating point and the V extension and all these things can be configured. Uh, depending on the configuration point of the core, we get up to 2.1 uh, DMIPS per megahertz and up to 3.72 core marks per megahertz. All of these cores support uh, multi-core with up to eight cores inside of a core complex and they do this coherently and we have a coherent uh, L2 cache support in the, the six series. Additionally, we support ECC on all the RAMs, as well as some real-time capabilities, 
Uh, so things like disabling dynamic branch prediction as well as local interrupts into the core for reduced latency. And then wrapping it all together, all of the additional Sci-5 collateral that we're known for uh, with Sci-5 Insight, uh, Advanced Trace and Debug, as well as uh, Sci-5 Shield uh, security solutions are all supported on the, the span of the 6 Series. So early on, I mentioned the goal of the 6 Series was to support higher performance and a similar PPA footprint. Well, this is the data to, to back that up. Uh, so if you compare uh, the E61, which is a uh, very similar configuration to the outgoing E31, you'll see that we offer up to 14% higher performance than the outgoing core, while at the same time only improving area, increasing area and power rather uh, by 3%. But in addition to the performance uplift that you get with the 6 Series, we're also bringing new features and capabilities to this class of product that weren't there previously. Uh, so in the 6 Series, uh, I mentioned we support the, the B extension. We also support half precision floating point as well. Uh, we have separate ITEMs and iCaches, uh, which is something we didn't support on the, the 3 and 5 Series. And then a, a data local store, and I'll talk a little bit about that in the next slide, but it gives us some unique uh, capabilities. Uh, and then finally, local port options uh, are another way to, to uh, improve performance for certain types of workloads. And then finally, an L2 cache uh, prefetcher, which significantly improves performance for uh, workloads on, like Linux type workloads uh, for the U6 type processor. All right, so the memory subsystem. So this is one of the bigger differentiators in the six series versus the outgoing cores. Uh, so I mentioned you can have either an ITEM or an iCache. On the, the outgoing E3, you had to always have the iCache. Uh, and in this class of product, we had a lot of customers that simply wanted directly addressable L1 uh, instruction memory. So now we have that option, uh, but you can also have both. You can have the L1 cache as well as the ITEM. Uh, in addition to that, on the data side, uh, we have the, the data cache or the DTEM, so you have to pick one or the other. Uh, but in addition to the data cache, we also support what's called a data local store or DLS memory. Uh, and this is just another name for a, a local L1 scratch pad memory. Uh, so it gives you some unique options where you can have the, the L1 data cache as well as this L1 scratch pad, uh, both in the design. Local ports, so these are, are kind of new and, and interesting. So these uh, are different than the, the system and front ports and our uh, standard products in that they're much more tightly integrated to the core itself. And so what this allows for is lowering the latency to get data into and, and out of the core, while at the same time, uh, it's clocked on the, the same clock as the core itself. Uh, so usually in Sci-5 cores and, and uh, our customers' designs, the, there's a difference between the core clock and, and the uncore clock. Uh, usually that's two to one. So with the local ports, you're seeing uh, lower latency, but at the same time, because it's clocked the same as the, the processor, you're getting higher bandwidth as well. Uh, we see this as a common use case for these class of cores where customers really want to push data as close to the core as possible, as fast as possible, have that core operate on the data, and then push it out to the, the next stage of the compute pipeline. And these local ports really help in, in enabling that workflow and optimizing that workflow. Maybe. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I can't even get out of it. Oh, oh. Let's restart the program. Sorry, online audience. I think I was there. Okay, let me put this guy back in. I love Windows. <laughs> All right, so get started with the six series today. Um, so since I lost a little time, I'll move a little faster here. Uh, so the 6 Series itself is offered in Sci-5 Core Designer. 
Sci Five Core Designer is our uh, web interface that we use, or our customer use rather, to, to configure our processors. It's super cool, it's really easy. Uh, we have a lot of configurability in these products and Sci Five Core Designer really makes it easy for, for our customers to configure their products. Uh, you can go to sci5.com, you can do it right now in the audience on your phone and go configure some of these cores. So please, please do check it out on the website. Um, but 21G3 wasn't just about the, the 6 Series release, although that was the, the big product release. Uh, we've also made incremental improvements to the existing portfolio. So with the X280, uh, we introduced some new computation instructions. Uh, so we have our own set of uh, custom instructions for these products called the, the Sci-5 Intelligence Extensions. Uh, so we've uh, increased some instructions there, added some instructions there rather, to support BFLOAT16 uh, matrix multiplication operations. Additionally, we've done some area optimizations uh, for the X280 or, or added some options in for that. Uh, so we found a lot of customers uh, looking at the X280 really liked the product but wanted it to be a little bit smaller, didn't really care as much about being able to run Linux and the like. So now we support the, uh, an option for the embedded vector profile, ZVE64F, uh, which effectively removes double precision floating point from the, the, vector, uh, the, the vector engine. And then finally, uh, memory subsystem improvements. So we spent a lot of time the past couple months focusing on optimizing those pathways into the core and, and out of the core. Performance P550 um, has also seen some updates. So we've added support for the hypervisor extension. Uh, so these are the, the set of instructions and interfaces to the core to support uh, the hypervisor extension. In addition to that, we've also increased uh, performance by improving uh, the frequency of the core now by 10%. So now we're hitting two and a half gigahertz in, in a seven nanometer process in our own implementations. Uh, at the same time, we've also reduced dynamic power by 10%. Uh, so think about that. So better performance and lower power. Uh, so P550 is gonna be that much better uh, with 21G3. And I'm not gonna talk too much about it because if you wanna learn more about the P550, uh, you can hear it from the architects themselves this afternoon in a demo theater. Uh, Josh and John will be there giving a talk on the P550. Uh, and then finally, World Guard availability. So we're announcing support for Sci-5 World Guard, which is our fine-grained security solution. Uh, so we've been talking about World Guard uh, for, for some time now, so hopefully you're familiar with it. Um, <clears throat> but now it's finally available in the essential class of products. And so Sci-5 World Guard adds, um, uh, defines rather what we call worlds. And you can have multiple worlds in an SOC. And downstream, you can assign attributes to a given world ID. To, to have different types of, of access permissions depending on who the requester world was. Uh, so support for the essential family in 21G3 and support rolling out to, to the other families uh, later in 2022. <coughs> and so just to wrap up, um, <coughs> sorry, I mentioned uh, relentless innovation. Um, why, do we, why do we work so hard? Why do we have so many releases? Well, our goal at Sci-5 is to enable a true market, com comp uh, true market competitor for, for processor IP. And through this relentless innovation, you know, we're really realizing that faster and faster every day. So Sci-5 has over 300 design wins from 100 different companies. We have eight of the top 10 semiconductor companies in the world. Um, so yeah, I think that's the, the end of the talk here. So happy to stop there and then uh, take questions. All right, so if you're online and attending, get those questions into either the chat or more preferably the Q&A. Uh, we'll take that. I will uh, forward questions. We're not gonna pass the mic. So you can either put it in the chat or raise your hand and I will take your question and we can, we can go directly up. Questions? I know I have marketing in my title, but you know I got back up in, in the audience too, so feel free to throw them at me. <laughs> you did mention Core Designer. Is the 21G3 now available in Core Designer? Is that something if we go out we can, we can look at today? Yeah, great question. It's not here right here today, but December 22nd is gonna be online. So today, if you went there, you would, get the, you would see the 21G2 release. Okay, great. Questions in the room? Let's see what we got, if we have anything online. 
still no questions online. They have been having a little bit of a glitch, so it may be that. As if it was my computer, I'm sorry. It, last call for questions around the room. Otherwise, we may let you let you go. All right, let's give them one more round of applause. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you.